So one of the upgrades that I uh, had done was uh, to the mechanical system. And uh, as I said in the first video, uh, it's a great system. I, I, you know, it's been working fine. I just think that it was uh, a bad decision to go with a forced air system. Uh, we had super insulated the house um, and done a whole bunch of additional work to the envelope uh, to improve on the energy efficiency. And I ended up getting this uh, 14,000, uh, sorry, yeah, $14,000, uh, 40,000 BTU furnace. Uh, it's super efficient, three stages. Uh, it's, uh, I mean, it's fantastic, but it never comes on. It never runs. Uh, we had a service tech in here, and uh, he was able to access uh, some information, and he said, you know, this thing's really never really run out of its first stage, which is it's barely using, I think, around five to 8,000 BTUs when it, uh, when it does come on. So I probably could have entertained some other options uh, instead of natural gas, and instead of a, um, a forced air uh, unit. But uh, that had mostly to do with the insulation that we did on the rest of the house. Uh, the unit itself, I'm very happy with it. It's a carrier. It's, it's been great. Uh, one of the things that we noticed very early on, uh, and I hadn't wanted to put one in, was an ERV, an energy recovery uh, ventilator, not an HRV, which is a heat recovery ventilator. Um, so the first issue was that because we had insulated the envelope, it uh, became the air inside the house became very stagnant, and we started noticing certain smells, uh, lingering smells, uh, just that stale air smell. So I knew that um, we had to get in some sort of uh, mechanical means of uh, natural ventilation. Uh, a mechanical means of uh, ventilation. And I chose this uh, ERV and it's been fantastic. Um, we uh, have it all set up and it runs only in specific uh, circumstances with the uh, humidity, uh, when the humidity is the right humidity outside, but uh, we don't have any issues inside the house as far as um, those, those same stagnant smells and lingering kitchen uh, odors. Uh, and I know a lot of people that have HRVs complain that the house gets too dry uh, or in the summertime they turn it off because it gets too humid. Uh, but because this is an ERV, it's also transferring the moisture, not just the air temperature, but the moisture. And so we haven't really had that issue. We've run this thing essentially uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the whole year, including right through winter, even when it's uh, minus 20 degrees. One of the cool features uh, in this particular model is the ability for it to automatically uh, close some dampers internally and uh, defrost itself. So even when it's minus 20 degrees outside and it's drawing in that really cold air, and if it detects some, some freezing happening, uh, it'll automatically close some ba uh, baffles and circulate the indoor uh, air temperature uh, to de defrost uh, the whole system, which is really kind of cool. So I'm very happy with it. I highly recommend it. Uh, definitely look at possibly uh, getting a one with a DC motor if you want to save even more money. And uh, in, the, in the winter time, uh, I would really like to entertain the idea of the intake, uh, which is on the south side of the house, uh, connecting it up to a, a solar uh, wall heater. So that's a, a solar air heater. It's essentially a, uh, there's a couple different products out there, but uh, it's essentially a black steel uh, box that uh, draws in air and of course on the south side uh, would superheat that uh, hot air before drawing it in here and actually use that to uh, preheat the air and even preheat uh, the house. 